Hello and welcome you horrible piles of carbon. Thank you so much for joining me again in the den. Now today I've got something very special. I'm actually genuinely excited to talk about this game. So much so that I've had to change my boxes twice just, you know, recording the footage. Like, seriously. Now this little gem is the Unholy War. Now there's maybe one or two bumholes poker in, but I can guarantee about 95% of you have never even heard of this game before. And that is bullshit considering it actually reviewed really well when it came out too. I honestly can't put my finger on why this game was never like super mainstream. It is so good. I personally discovered the game when I was a little kid and I remember absolutely loving it. It was really intuitive, really easy to pick up and play and just super fun. But fast forward 20 years of sex, drugs and rock and roll and yeah, I basically just forgot it even existed. Honestly, it wasn't until I saw a video on YouTube completely randomly that I remembered that the game exists. I was like, shit, I remember that, it was fucking amazing. And it honestly was kind of chance that I would even see it on YouTube. There's not that many videos about the game even there. Like maybe what, a dozen at the most. Most of them are just like quiet gameplay as well. I thought, no, enough is enough. I'm gonna fucking force feed this down everyone's throats until they love it. Basically the same way that I get blown. Anyway, enough of me rambling. I really do want to get on and uh, play this game. A small disclaimer before we start. Um, I found it very, very difficult to capture footage for this game without it being kind of jumpy and skipping a little bit. But I've done my very, very best. Um, I'll try my best to mess around with it as well um, so it doesn't appear so to you guys. But if you do notice the odd little skip here and there, then please forgive me. It was très difficile. But enough fucking rambling. Let us get In my opinion, The Unholy War is the literal definition of a hidden gem. Nobody seems to know about it, and that is truly tragic. I guess it would fall into the category of arena fighting game, as you have 1v1 battles in a large 3D space. And this game makes serious use of that 3D space. There's a metric fuckton of movement and verticality to the gameplay. As for the story, and you really don't need to worry about this too much, the game takes place on the planet of Sara? 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 We'll say Sarah, which is inhabited by the first of our two armies, the Arcanes. They were living there quite peacefully until a series of unfortunate events brings the second army, the Technos, crashing to land. After the Technos discover the planet is rich in a rare material, they decide they want to take the planet for themselves, thus beginning the War of Sarah. Hmm, starting a war over precious resources. Sound familiar? There are some finer story details to uncover and even a little more lore about each character to learn, but I don't want to make you jizz your nick as in this video. I want you to go off and discover the wonders of Zara for yourself. Anyway, now that you know the basics, let's meet our two armies, because honestly, the characters themselves are the main highlight of this game. And what better way to start than getting to know the locals? I want to get through everybody, so we'll rattle this off pretty quick. So first up we have Dark Angel, this Dark Angel looking son of a bitch who can shoot lasers from his eyes, do this uneventful Hulk smash kind of looking thing, and he can also place these healing crystals to give him a little pep up during the match. All in all not a terrible character, not a whole lot of fun, but those eye lasers can be pretty effective if you can keep a little bit of distance on the enemy. Now this behemoth that looks like a rhino whose tits have turned into extra legs is Brontu. It can pull out a pretty mean charge attack. It's pretty hard to hit, but effective when it does. He can, what looks like him complaining really loudly to damage opponents. And finally, this one is pretty much my favorite, he can shit out last night's Vindaloo to poison any unfortunate soul that wanders amongst its spicy goodness. Next up we have Ekton, an undead solely in goat man who can place net traps to catch morons off guard. He also has this weird mid-range spray attack which leeches life from opponents. And finally he has this fairly basic whip that damages and slows the enemy. By this point you'll probably start to notice a pattern forming as we go through the characters. 
They all more or less have one melee attack, one mid-range attack, and one special move, usually a trap of some sort, but not for everyone, as you can see soon. Take this reptilian, magic casting, warcraft, gex geckos, evil twin looking motherfucker for example. He has a melee attack with his mighty sword. He can summon homing ravens, open bracket, coolest power ever, close bracket. And finally, Gex has one of the more exciting special moves. If he manages to stand and fill his special bar without interruption, he opens up the heavens and the god of Zara himself fires up a piece and drops a few hot rocks on his opponents. Pretty gnarly, god. The next combatant, Fire Bitch, is a slight deviation from the norm. She doesn't have a melee attack, but rather a ranged fireball attack as her main, a fire trap for area control, and a gnarly fire bomb attack as a little flaming cherry on top of the flaming cake. All in all, good speed, good damage, pretty decent character. This Mongolin and Ryder are pretty unique as they technically have four different moves, best in everyone else's three. Together they can fire magic missiles, which is her basic attack, a magical switch attack where the player and enemy change places! Definitely a move with a lot of tactical uses when you think about the power-ups and stage hazards. And finally we have a lick attack which is pretty much only useful in the bedroom unless you happen to lick a power-up. The Mongolin will then consume the power-up and when you next press the button it will spit it out in the form of a magic homing fireball. Pretty sweet if you ask me. This guy who looks like the visual manifestation of Chlamydia is the Prana Devil and although he has very low health, he can be an annoyingly mean little shit. He has a basic spit attack, which is a bit shit and is very much for chip damage. His second attack is to lay up to three little eggs that can hatch into mini prawners and attack the enemy on their own. They aren't exactly strong, but can create the perfect distraction for you to get in prana special attack. Now his special has him latch onto the enemy and devour them, the same way a Geordie bird devours a kebab after 11 pints of tea in the rear and coke and equally as messy. The duration is decided by a button bashing bar at the bottom of the screen. The move doesn't have much range so it can be tricky to apply, hence getting help off the mini pranas as a distraction, but get it two or three times in a match and you will be laughing. Now that's the locals out of the way, let's meet those crazy invaders. To start off with, on the techno side, we have what is probably one of my favourite of all the fighters in the game. An absolute behemoth of a tank who is super slow but very healthy. He can do some very basic and very short reaching punches with his robo arms. He can fire a pretty basic and relatively short range projectile. But Jaeger's party piece is not dumping himself in Red Bull, it is actually to fire homing missiles which are quite slow but are good at anti-air defence and keeping the opponents on the move. As a little side note, I could swear blind I had a figurine of this tank when I was a kid, but it just really doesn't seem likely. If anyone happens to know anything about it, please let me know. Now this little lobster mech mantis isn't really up to much in my opinion. They can drop these mini black holes that suck enemies towards it, but good luck trying to actually use it for anything. They have a pretty decent bite attack which has a bit of range to it and is pretty rapid, as you can see here. And finally they have a homing attack which is pretty slow but leeches a small amount of health from the opponent. Can be handy in a tough situation. Now this bitch is Cray Cray, probably one of the best characters if you can handle its speed. Firstly she can slice you up good with her fucking T-1000 sword arms. Her projectile attack is to fire a small string of silver balls which do decent damage and move very fast. And finally, but probably more strategically, she can use an orb shield for short periods of time, which not only make her immune to damage, but reflect projectiles back towards the enemy. In the right hands, Quicksilver is a fast and mean bitch, and the opponent will be dead before they've even realised. Now this little weird alien reject really doesn't have much going for him. He can randomly teleport, he can fire a shock beam, which is kind of his only real attack. And thirdly, you can deploy a magic rune that shoots lightning balls very slowly towards the enemy. Double kill. This human metal workshop hybrid is probably the best all-round character and the easiest to pick up and use. All of his attacks are very simple versions of the three attacks I mentioned earlier. 
Firstly, a basic melee where he whacks you with his big saw arm. His ranged attack is some sort of saw cannon that he fires extremely rapidly. You will feel the pain if you stay in range of this. And finally, as his nice basic trap, a huge wall of rotating saw blades. Definitely a decent all-round character and definitely a good character to play as if you're new to the game. This speedy hovering annoyance is a bit of a bore to play if you ask me. Firstly, she can apparently freeze enemies in place, although can I fuck pull it off? Secondly, she can directly leech health from enemies, which is kinda handy. And finally, she has a basic blaster as a somewhat ranged attack. It's not the most powerful thing in the world, but my god does it fire off quicker than I do. So all in all, not my favourite character, but she is quick in flight and gunfire. So I may be guilty of leaving the best character to last. Now he might not be my favourite character to play as, but oh my word is this guy not the craziest motherfucker I've ever came across in a fighting game. Firstly, his vehicle can fly to any height with gusto, making him a terribly difficult target to hit. He has a nice solid basic ranged attack which does decent damage. He has a terrifying bombing run attack which just peppers the entire area beneath him in explosive hellfire. But it's a special move that really takes the soggy biscuit. If you hold circle for about 3 seconds, then Kill Cycle will initiate his kamikaze attack. And well, I'm sure you can tell what's coming. Yeah, so this move immediately kills Kill Cycle, but delivers huge damage to the landing zone. The only problem is making sure you hit your target, otherwise it's just tasteless suicide. So now we're done meeting the cast, it's time to learn how this game actually works. Now there are two main ways to play this game, both of them being sat down and only one of them involving a finger inside you. The two modes in question are strategy and mayhem, firstly we will be looking at mayhem. This mode allows you to play a variety of battles where you get to choose which characters fight against each other and on what stage. Then you pretty much just go crazy and get obliterated. There are no complicated rules to follow, it's a simple team event. Think how a team game of Tekken used to work back in the day. Each player picks a character from their pool and they fight 1v1. When one player is eliminated, they have to choose which character to use next, whilst the winning player keeps his character for the next fight, complete with whatever health and mana they had left. This continues until one team has destroyed the other. There are some elements of strategy though. As you play the game more and more, you learn that each character has someone that they are particularly effective against, so bearing this in mind whilst playing and picking your characters can be advantageous. All in all, it may be pretty simple, but it is intense fun. Similar to having a finger in you. Let's of course not forget the arenas themselves, which are also full of character. They have so many interactables and levels, and couple that with the game's speed and it becomes very easy to get disoriented mid-match. As well as having great verticality, the maps can also contain things like lava, which burns you, pits, which shoot you out somewhere else, teleport pads, which do very much the same, bounce pads, evil lasers, electrifying cubes, and even a bunch of power-ups for you to grab too. This all culminates into an absolute barrymore of a party, and is pure carnage throughout. I really can't tell you how good this game is, you really just have to experience it for yourself. Now we move on to what is definitely the most involved and arguably the best part of the Unholy War, the strategy mode. So this menu essentially opens up a whole new game complete with expositional cutscenes between battles to learn more about the planet and its war. I'm sure you nerds are already excited, so imagine when I tell you we're now playing a strategy war game on a hexagonal style grid map. Wait, 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 put your penis back in your pants because I'm not even finished. Choosing to play as the Arcane or Technos, you are thrown into a 12 stage campaign, each stage with its own unique map. As for the gameplay, you have all the basic movement and combat rules you would expect from a grid based battlefield. You take turns moving your characters, you can move a set amount of spaces, then you can perform an action. The main goal of each map is to annihilate the enemy and or take over their HQ by landing on it and defeating anyone directly defending it. Battles take place when two opposing units come together and one of the two players decides to attack. When this happened, the game shifts into that old familiar battle mode and the two characters fight it out. 
If, however, there's more than one enemy in the immediate vicinity when you pick a fight, you will have to take them all on, one by one, getting covered in claret jail style. I mean, so far that alone would work as a concept for me, but Unholy War has a few added dynamics to play around with in battle. The first thing you'll notice... Oh God, I sound like someone's taking a shit in my sinuses all of a sudden. <clears throat> First thing you will notice is each character has a special move they can use whilst on the battle map. These range from offensive to defensive and even logistical. A few examples being, Jaeger has a nuke that he can drop quite a distance. The nuke simply damages the targeted opponent so they have less health when entering battle. Killcycle has his patented exploding suicide move which damages enemies and friendlies alike. Razor Fane can use a blade tower to block an enemy's path, which can come in useful. But I must mention Mantis, who has a pretty insane special. She can overpower her allies, which means they will enter any battle with a 50% boost to health and mana, or stamina, or whatever we're calling this bar. This is a huge advantage, the caveat being, however, the overcharged character will die after three moves. Anyway, that's enough of those, I'm not spoiling them all for you. On the third mission, we are introduced to our next strategical dynamic, the HQ. This is not only the enemy's main target, but also where you can buy new units. Yes, once you collect enough currency, I'll get onto that in a second, you can hit up your base and refresh your dwindling army. This also adds another layer of strategy, as you could buy numerous weaker units or one big healthy... <coughs> Or you could even select the unit specifically because of a particular enemy unit you're having trouble with. Finally, I want to briefly cover the currency system in this mode, called Ore. This is the rare material the game's plot is based on, and you can see why. You can collect Ore by having one of your units end their turn on one of the mining sites, represented by a gold glowing space. They will continue to gain Ore for every turn they spend on the space, and this stacks with any other units you have covering other spaces too. Now, ore is important because it's not only the currency for buying new units at the HQ, but it costs ore to use your unit's special abilities too. The ore spaces might not seem crucial at first, but when you're fighting your ass off and the enemy keeps sending wave after wave of my own men at them, especially as you get closer and closer to their HQ, you will quickly realize you need to take control of the resources to secure a tough win. Anyway, as much as I want to keep going, I feel like I've given you enough of a taste of the Unholy War to seriously whet your appetite. This game really is fast-paced, colourful, violent fun, and it boasts one of the most eclectic rosters I've ever seen in any game ever. And the fact every character has their own set of completely unique moves is just astonishing to me. Couple that with a strategy story mode for when you're really ready to sink your teeth in, and you've got what is, in my opinion, a solid 9 out of 10 game. The only thing that would bump it up to a 10 for me is a polished modern remake complete with a bunch more story scenarios. That's right, my only real issue with the game is there just isn't enough of it. Peace out, one love. So, that was Unholy War. Um, for what seems like a pretty basic game on the surface, I'd really say there's a lot more to it than you first think. If you just want a cathartic sort of battle, then get stuck into the mayhem side of it. If you want something a bit more strategic, a bit more played out, then there's the strategy side. It's essentially a campaign. Honestly, I could sit and play and talk about this game until my jaw locked, and even then I'd just fucking grunt at you. There is a bunch of stuff that I haven't even talked about in this game. There's a few secret characters, a few secret maps. Um, I barely even got started on the campaign. But I didn't want to show you all the bells and whistles because that's your job. I genuinely implore all of you to find a copy of this game or emulate it if you have to and just give it a go. Like, seriously, it's just fucking awesome. This game should have been mainstream. It should be the game that's getting remade now because, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, just, I mean, Program malfunction. Initializing reboot. Motherfucker. So enough very poorly scripted rambling from me. I'm gonna stop wasting your time and let you go find your own copy of the Unholy. <laughs>